Hope you guys are having a good time visiting with the players and coaches and everybody from Georgia and Nebraska. So we got a big game tomorrow. I want to get you guys kind of in the mood and in the spirit. Let's get things started with a look at how things went for the Georgia Bulldogs this year. Welcome back, everyone, inside Georgia's Sanford Stadium. We're getting ready to tee it up between the hedges on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Athens. Come the dogs through the red coat band from the east end zone out of the locker room and on the field. Here's a fourth down try here. Here comes Jarvis Jones. Eat him up, baby. The sack master. Murray pump fake wants to throw. Here comes pressure. Hangs it up. There's Bennett. He catches it at the 30. Bennett to the 10. Angles into the end zone. Touchdown. Play fake Murray. He's got a man wide open. Bowling Brown's going to catch it. The old hit ball trick. Nobody's going to touch him. Oh, beautiful executed play. Mitchell makes the catch, he breaks away, 30, 25, 20, fears inside, 10, breaks the tackle, 5, breaks another one, touchdown! Here's Kate Foster for a long field goal just inside the 40, we block it, it's Mappy, we pick it up, he's going to take it to the house, touchdown! Saw some of that grown man football in there. In 12 seasons at Georgia, Mark Richt has averaged nearly 10 wins per season, consistently excellent, a winner, a championship program he's built. Please welcome the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Mark Richt. Mark, good to see you. Have a seat right here. I'm going to, you can have the one right in the middle. Because first thing, I know you coaches love video study, so the first thing we're going to do, give you a little taste of what you have in store tomorrow. Let's take a look at how Nebraska wound up here at the Capital One Bowl. Sets throws, has Kenny Bell wide open at the 15, makes a catch, 10, 5, dives, touchdown Nebraska! division in just the second year in this Big Ten conference.
Five straight nine win seasons, a 10 win season this year, champion of the Legends Division. He's restored toughness back to the Nebraska football program. Please welcome the head coach of the Cornhuskers, Bo Pelini. Bo, welcome. It's good to see you. So you're, you're Mr. Casual. You didn't think you had to wear a red tie like the rest of us, or what? <laughs> What's, uh, you're back here for the second straight year, Bo. What's, what's this bowl experience like for you? I, you, know, you know, we were excited to come back here, and it, it's first class. You know, the city of Orlando, the, the Capital Bowl One Committee, and, and everybody associated with it just treats you so well. And, uh, you know, our players, you know, you come back to Orlando for the second time, you get to do all the things you didn't have a chance to do the first time around. And getting the opportunity to play such a tremendous football team is uh, really an honor for our team. What's the week been like for you down here, Mark, and your team? I think it's been great. Uh, it was kind of cold in Georgia. I got, people around here were complaining about the weather, but we thought it was good. And it did not rain this week. Uh, as I was told, <laughs> we're never able to say publicly it rained in Orlando. But uh, we, had a, we had a good week. I thought our guys focused on football when we were doing the football part. But uh, a lot of great, fun things to do outside of the practices and the meetings. and. I think our guys did a good job of enjoying those as well. well what's your philosophy, Mark, on, on handling a bowl trip in terms of balancing the attractions and the things that players get to do versus getting ready for, for a very tough opponent in a right. game that's going to be highly viewed? Well, I do, I do still think that this uh, bowl experience is, is a reward for our players. I hope they look at it that way. I think they want to enjoy everything that there is to enjoy here in Orlando and, and have done that. But uh, you know, we schedule our practices in the morning. We want to have the rest of the day free for the guys to enjoy the parks and that type of thing. But uh, like I asked them even way back when we started our bowl pr preparation back in Athens is, you know, the times that we're meeting, the times that we're practicing, the times that we're lifting and running and doing all that, just focus. Keep your focus on that at that moment. But when it's over, you know, go have a good time and, and do it in the right way. And I think and that's our philosophy. And, but we know that uh, there's going to be a great competition coming. And uh, you, know, you tend to remember your bowl games by whether you won them and you lost them, too. So we, we know it's very important to compete for this game. How do you feel about that bowl in terms of balancing it and putting emphasis on having fun versus getting ready for the game? You know, very similar. Uh, you know, we, same, uh, just like Georgia did, we did our work in the mornings and then gave our players the afternoons and evenings to kind of have their self and enjoy the experience. You know, it is a reward. It's a reward for having a tremendous, you know, a tremendous year, being able to come down and, and uh, you know, but at the end of the day, like you say, you know, it's uh, at the end of the week, you, you're going to be defined by what happens in the bowl game. And, and we know you, there was a tremendous challenge lying at the end of the week. And our players understand that. They, they have tremendous respect for, for who this football team is we're getting ready to play and the challenge that lies ahead. And, and uh, I'm sure Georgia felt the same way. Uh, in terms of coming here, in addition to it, it being a very well-organized bowl and a great attraction, what was the attraction about coming and playing Georgia in this game? Well, you know, we, we had, there were some options on the table for us when, when uh, you know, when the bowl invitations came out. We could have gone a couple different places. And at the end of the day, obviously, a big part of it was be able to come back to Orlando. But, you know, being able to play the best football team we possibly could. And uh, we thought, you know, Georgia was, a, you know, we consider them one of the best football teams in the country. There's no question. Uh, the way they're coached, the way they play, the, we have tremendous respect for their program and thought it was a great opportunity for our teams. So, you know, you come in, you come to play college football to c compete against the best, and that's what we're doing uh, tomorrow. Uh, deep inside you, from my extensive research and getting ready for this game, you got a little Husker blood. Deep inside you, don't you? Yeah, well, I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. Grew up a Nebraska fan. <laughs> and uh, my mom and dad went to South High. And uh, all, my, all my cousins on my mom and dad, dad's side of the family live in the state of Nebraska, just about all of them. And uh, so, I, you know, we, I mean, I grew up a Nebraska fan. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It probably wasn't until that I actually went to college at the University of Miami that I uh, I was kind of holding, holding out, hoping Nebraska might call it and recruit me, but uh, ended up going. Did, to the, did you run like Tommy Frazier? No, I didn't run like Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> that was my problem. But, uh, but anyway, uh, I do have a lot of uh, family in Nebraska still. And matter of fact, uh, 
my cousin Billy and, and, uh, and his uh, wife put together something called the Corn Dog. It's a newsletter, Nebraskans for, for, the, for Georgia. But now, you know, it's easy to cheer for both teams when they never play each other, but, but now we're playing each other. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure who they're going to cheer for. You haven't converted them? You, gotta, you, well, gotta, here's you what know I the think. name of the game is recruiting, right? Well, I think they'll say <laughs> whatever they're going to say, but I think until the game starts, yeah. they're really not going to know where their heart is. So I'll ask them after the game who they're cheering for. <laughs> when you look, Bo, at this Georgia team, what's, what's the initial reaction that you see when you watch them on tape? Well, very talented, well-coached, uh, you know, very balanced team. I mean, uh, you, you know, they're, they're good in every area. And, you know, it's a credit to their, obviously they have tremendous talent, but the coaching and, and the, um, you know, they're going to challenge you in every area, every play. You know, they, they, they on offense, they, they run the ball, throw the ball well. You know, they, they have, you know, tremendous skill and, and, uh, and a very physical football team. I mean, they, uh, they present challenges, you know, in, in every area. And, and uh, you know, what should you expect from playing a, 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 you know, a team coached by Coach Rick? Same question to you, Mark, but in terms of when you watch Nebraska, what jumps off the tape at you? Well, a lot of things. I know offensively, any team that's rushing for 250 yards a game is a dangerous team. And uh, got a couple guys, uh, one over 1,000, another one I think real close to 1,000 yards, and another back five, 600 yards rushing. And, uh, but then you add the ability um, to still pass the ball for 200 yards a game. That's, that's a pretty dangerous combination. And, uh, We've had our challenges with teams that have quarterbacks that can run like that. And, uh, you know, Mr. Martin <clears throat> Mr. Martinez is a very talented guy. And uh, we know that he's a, a big key to, you know, Nebraska's success. Or if we can uh, rattle him a little bit, we may have a chance at uh, having a chance to uh, get some stops. But defensively, always extremely uh, well coached, very well coordinated. They one of the past, best passing defenses in the United States of America, number one in some categories. And uh, we just know that we got our work cut out for us, special teams, uh, dangerous return men. So uh, we, got, we got our issues. Martinez is one of the many stars. We'll see Georgia has one too. I know being a defensive guy, what, what's your impression of the impact that Jarvis Jones can have on a game? Well, he, he's a tremendous talent. Uh, really good football player that you know I think they use him real well they, they move him around they make it hard for you to uh, to kind of know where he is and and he's just a guy I mean uh, obviously I spent nine years in the NFL he's going he'll play on Sunday someday and 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 be really good and um, he's been well coached he plays hard he you know obviously has all the intangibles to go along with the talent and, and uh, you know, you see a lot of guys out there who have talent, but the kids who utilize that talent play the right way, and he does. And and uh, it's obvious that uh, you know the, he he's going to be successful for a long period of time. When you look at this game, Mark, in terms of you mentioned how you remember how you finish in a bowl season, how do you define what winning this game could do for this program? It would be the third time in Georgia history, I think, that the Bulldogs have won 12 games. If you guys could win. Well, I think that's important to our team, but uh, what I like, I like, to make it, I like to make it a little more personal. Um, I know that we've got a lot of seniors. This is their last shot to play, their, you know, play in the red and black, and, and uh, there'll be a, probably a couple other guys that are deciding what they're going to do uh, as juniors. Is this going to be the last time they play for Georgia? And, and I want it to be a good experience for those guys. I want that locker room to be an excited, happy locker room, you know, and I know also it's a it's a it's the beginning of next season in a lot of ways it, it is the first game of 2013 and uh, what happens in this game does have some effect on how people view your program going into the next season and because it's still kind of a uh, beauty pageant so to speak I mean people are still voting on where who should be in what game uh, I think it's important how you're ranked in the preseason so I think this game could go a long way in deciding that as well Bo, your team, I know some of the people in Nebraska have called them the heartburn Huskers because they've shown tremendous resiliency and been able to come back from deficits and win games. And you and I were visiting earlier this morning. You talked about what this group, particularly the older guys, mean to you. What would it mean to you and this program to, to come out and get an 11th victory, win this bowl game, and, and send them out on the right note? Well, you know, like I was talking about to you guys this morning, the, 
Um, th this group of young men, the seniors and the older kids in the program who have been with our, with me really since I took over at Nebraska, have done so much, you know, and forget about, you know, it goes well beyond wins and losses. It's how they've uh, represented our program off the field, in the, in the classroom, uh, and, and everything that they've done. They've done everything I've asked them to do, what we've asked them to do as a staff, represented the program the right way, and, and, uh, and they just have tremendous character, work ethic, and, and I can't say enough about them. It's been an absolute honor to be around them and, and to coach them. And uh, I, I just hope we hope the you know, same way, Coach. You, know, you like to see him go out the right way. I think there's no doubt that we're going to see an exciting game tomorrow. And thank both you guys for coming up. Two of the class acts and two of the finest coaches in the country, Mark Rick thank and you. Bo Pelini. Mark, thank you. Thank you. Bo, good luck. Thank Thanks you. a lot.